Another aspect related to breathing is intra-abdominal pressure, which is controlled by the combination of the pelvic floor, abdominal diaphragm, and abdominal muscles. I'm not an expert, but I try to be accurate and provide all of the references I use for the information presented in these videos. The pelvic floor is a group of muscles which form a bowl-like shape that fills the space between the pubic arch and the coccyx. The pelvic floor is also sometimes called the pelvic diaphragm, and this is because in relation to how the abdominal diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, the pelvic diaphragm separates the pelvic cavity from the perineum. The muscles which make up the pelvic floor are the levator ani and the coccygeus. The levator ani makes up the anterior part of the pelvic floor and connects to the fascia of the obturator internus muscle. The levator ani further consists of three muscles, the iliocosageus, pubocosageus, and puborectalis. The coccygeus muscle makes up the posterior part of the pelvic floor and connects to the coccyx or that tip of the tailbone and this muscle functions to pull the coccyx forward. The pelvic floor muscles act in a reciprocal manner with the abdominal diaphragm. During inhalation the diaphragm contracts and descends and the pelvic floor relaxes. During exhalation the pelvic floor contracts along with the abdominal muscles which increases intra-abdominal pressure and aids the, in the ascension of the relaxing diaphragm. The abdominal muscles, pelvic floor muscles, and the diaphragm all work in coordination to regulate intra-abdominal pressure. The image on the left shows how the diaphragm in red, pelvic floor in purple, and abdominals in yellow form a cylinder-like structure. Using this cylinder model or example, we can see how the diaphragm would act like a piston pressing down in the cylinder and increasing pressure. If the abdominals and pelvic floor are relaxed, the diaphragm is allowed to fully descend. If the abdominals and or pelvic floor are contracted, the descent of the diaphragm is impeded by the increase in abdominal It should be noted that the pelvic floor and abdominals, specifically the transverse abdominis, co-contract. In addition, studies I've recent also note that during increased intra-abdominal pressure, uh, namely during the Valsalva maneuver, activation of all the abdominals occurs along with the pelvic floor. Uh, to explain, the Valsalva maneuver is a breathing method used in weightlifting, but also for clinical purposes. It involves taking a breath and breathing out against what is called a closed gl glottis, basically keeping your mouth closed and trying to uh, blow out. Uh, some people describe this as being identical to bearing down, but from my understanding, they are not equivalent, although bearing down also does increase intra-abdominal pressure. While contraction of the pelvic floor increases intra-abdominal pressure and prevents the maximum descent of the abdominal diaphragm, there's a study that shows that contraction of the pelvic floor muscle increases what's called maximum voluntary ventilation, which is the ability to maintain a high-level airflow such as during heavy breathing, during high intensity exercise. Here are the references I used in studying for this video. Note that this reference uh, two was only performed in women. It doesn't say why only women were chosen. Maybe they're more familiar with controlling their pelvic floor muscles. I don't know. Um, I don't see a reason why the results would be different in men though. And for reference number three, I was only able to access the abstract. If you found this topic interesting or you learned something, uh, please like and share it. Drop me a comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe and the bell notification. And if you're on Instagram, make sure to follow. I post some shorts for my own training on Instagram, which don't go to YouTube, so it's better to follow me on Instagram if you like what I'm doing. Uh, next up, I'm going to look at how breathing may affect physical performance and all the functional aspects of breathing.